Okay, I'm just gonna say it. Managing product data is a hassle. And the less time we can all spend on it, the better. That's why PIM or product information management systems are such a good call. And if you're watching this video, chances are that you're at least a little familiar with them already. But just in case, what we're talking about here is a software that helps you centralize, enrich, and distribute the massive amount of data that comes with the territory when you're buying and selling online. Thanks to software like this, you can easily organize all of your product information. You can avoid a bunch of typical e-commerce mistakes that your competitors are probably still making. And you can give yourself more time to focus on other stuff that really matters when you're running an online business, but that you keep putting off. Or like my Irish colleagues like to say, you keep putting it on the long finger. As I'm sure you've noticed by now, there are quite a few different PIM options out there and even a few tools that claim that they can help or that they have PIM capabilities. But when you start using them, you quickly realize that they aren't actually all that helpful. Looking at you, my friends, who use your sales platform to store your information. With all the options available, if this is your first time using the software, it can be hard to know where to start. So we're here to help. I'm Manuela with Plitix, and in this video, I'm gonna take you through some of the key features that you should be looking for when selecting a product information management system or software. First up, something that really should be standard across the board, unlimited attributes. As I'm sure you've realized by now, the amount of information that you can include about even the most basic product is practically infinite. You've got data about materials, price, style, branding, sizing, shipping, keywords, labels, product descriptions, you get the idea, right? And that's one of the many reasons why using your e-commerce platform as the place to store all of your product data is not the best idea. They're just not equipped to help you navigate and organize all of that information in an efficient way, let alone sync it across your other channels. There's so much information that your customers expect to see and so much that's specific to one sales channel or another that you really don't want to start restricting how much data you can attach to your products. So if a PIM that you're considering mentions a maximum number of attributes that you can have in your system, or it even tries to charge you more just to add a few more attributes, then that's a bit of a red flag. Having unlimited attributes is just the basic level of service that you should expect. If your PIM's really helpful, it should also give you the option to group your attributes together so you can check the ones relevant to you in any given moment, like product specs, prices, location specific content, and so on. And it also should offer you a wide range of different attribute types. Sure, a lot of information could be shared in the form of a short text, but wouldn't it be easier to put things like sizes in a dropdown like this? Or to differentiate between text and numbers to make processing pricing information easier? Or even to create completeness attributes that can show you how much information has been filled in for each product and how much is left to do. Okay, moving on to feature number two, advanced filtering. I know you probably love all of your products equally, but that doesn't mean you wanna look at them all at the same time, right? Advanced filtering is absolutely a pit must have and here's why. Imagine you just want to check your products from a certain brand. Pretty simple to do, right? But now imagine that due to a change in supplier or in local regulations or something along those lines, you now only want to see one particular type of product and only the ones made from a particular material and that are only being sold in a particular marketplace. Suddenly not so simple, right? You could go through all of your products yourself and make a manual list of which ones to focus on, sure. But then what happens when new products come into your catalog or when you stop selling old ones? Now imagine this is something you need to check every week or every day. Without advanced filtering options, you could end up spending hours sifting through data before you even get started looking at the details of the products in question. Speaking of time sucks, another chore that you're probably ready to remove from your workflow is having to make individual edits across multiple products one at a time either because of a temporary price reduction for a sale or an update to shipping information, or because someone decided that using the word red was just too passe, so now all of your red products are suddenly Spartan Crimson instead. 
yep, that's a real color. I don't know about you, but personally, I would rather not spend my day going through every product in my catalog to update one detail again and again and again and again and again. So yeah, bulk editing is definitely a must have in my book. Ideally, this feature should be simple to use and let you quickly select whichever products you want to work on. You know, maybe by using that advanced filtering feature that we just talked about. Then you just choose the attribute or the attributes that you want to change and enter a new value for all of them at once. Like magic, but you know, for data. Up next, we have a damn good feature. Sorry, my bad, I mean a, a good damn feature. You know, digital asset management. A digital asset management feature does exactly what it says it does. It manages your digital assets. Assets here being images, videos, PDFs, graphics, and any other files involved in your selling process. And manage here, meaning that it stores them, it organizes them, and it even associates them with any relevant products, among other things, so that all of that information is together. On that note, any given product normally has a whole bunch of these assets associated with it. So if you've got a whole bunch of products with a whole bunch of assets, then that means you've got... You know where I'm getting with this, right? Some companies end up using a separate standalone dam solution, normally because their PIM system doesn't provide them with this feature. And I mean, you could do that too, no judgment here. Personally though, I'd say it's a lot more convenient to use a PIM that already has dam capabilities built right in. Don't you think? Speaking of convenience, and before we move on to the next feature, if you check the description of this video, you'll find a link where you can download the free Ultimate PIM Buyer's Guide, which is really handy and has some PIM provider comparisons amongst other things. Now, don't ever say I never gave you anything. Okay, moving on to feature number five. You've got a whole bunch of products with a whole bunch of assets. Sounds like it would take a whole bunch of people to work on all of that data, right? But when it comes to that data, maybe not everybody needs to be able to see and edit everything. For example, Larry in logistics doesn't really need to know the SEO keywords for each of the products that he's shipping out. On the other hand, Maria in marketing would absolutely love to know those keywords, but she might not be that interested in the packaging details. And we know you don't want Clive over in client relations to have the option to edit or accidentally erase anything in the system. A decent PIM will give you the option of having different levels of permissions for different types of users, which can save you a lot of time and possibly a lot of headaches down the line. Next, we're gonna talk about relationships. I know they can be a little tricky at times, but at least when it comes to the product kind of relationships, a PIM can lend you a hand. Think about all the different possible relationships between your products. You've got accessories, variations, spare parts, upsell options, cross-sell options, and even downsell options. The list goes on. Instead of trying to manage all of those relationships on your own, a good quality PIM system should really be able to keep track of them for you and even automatically provide that information to different platforms that you sell on if the logistics of the platform allows for it. On that note, we come to our final feature and perhaps one of the most fundamental features your PIM should offer. The ability to quickly and easily import and export your data. I know you were waiting for this one. You definitely want to be able to set up automatic imports based on a schedule that's convenient for you. Without that option, you'd still be stuck manually importing your data on a weekly or even a daily basis. And heaven forbid that you ever forget or pff, worse yet, take a day off. You're also gonna wanna be able to save your import settings so that you can reuse them every time you bring in data from a particular source. Because, you know, life is just too short to spend it inputting data import preferences again and again. Logically enough, you're also gonna wanna have the easiest export options possible. After all, What's the point in having all this beautifully enriched product information just sitting around in your PIM where only you can see it, right? In an ideal world, your PIM will give you the ability to have automatic exports set up to let you send data to your different channels as quickly as possible, be that through an automatic feed or an automatically generated file that you can then share with whichever channel needs it. And hey, if your PIM can also put your data into a beautiful automatically generated PDF whenever you like, then even better. 
I mean, think how handy that would be for your sellers on the road. So there you have it. The minimum basic functions any good PIM should provide. Think of them as your starting point when considering different PIM options. Plenty of PIMs will have additional features on top of these, but if they don't have these to start with, then they may well not be a great option. What do you think though? Which of these features matter most to you and did we miss any? Let us know in the comments and don't forget about that free PIM buyer's guide that you can find down below in the description. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to be the first to know when we post new videos with e-commerce tips. Thanks for watching. Digital. <laughs> That was so good too. It was.